Okay, hang on a second. Let me just make sure I'm going to do uh, two recordings here. So hang on a second. Um, and then I'll also have you mute Ace when he's speaking so that it, it, the camera will stay on him. Yep, yeah, I'll do that. Yes, he never says that. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get started. And feel free to put questions in the chat too, by the way. I'm happy to do that. So I'm Eric Vickery, and I'm here just to help uh, all of us uh, as a dental community to get back at it and really get the bottom line healthy again. We've got a lot of catching up to do. And so what I want to talk about today is how to uh, really get growth in a time where maybe you're thinking I need to play catch up, I wanna think in terms of growth. Best month ever after best month ever after best month ever to get caught up. And so uh, the, the biggest thing that we can do as, uh, as a unit, as, a, as dentistry as a whole, is recognize that you can only grow your practice two possible ways. There's only two ways to grow it. And the first way is pretty obvious, which is getting more patients in the door. And at some point you've expanded to your capacity and you realize I can't see any more new patients. New patients are waiting a long time to get in. It's a whole other conversation. And what's next? How, how else can I grow? My schedule is now full. It may not be the goal, but it's full. And so I want you to think about the second way you're, you're growing your practice. And the second way you grow your practice is a little less obvious. And that is by doing more dentistry per visit, being more efficient. And so you ever notice if you have a day full of, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of patients, just a ton of patients coming in, 20 patients, and you look at, and you're tired and you're exhausted at the end of the day, and the production is just really not that good. And then you have a day where you have, you know, six, seven, eight patients that you're doing a lot of dentistry on, and the production and, and the, the, the goal was great. You hit a great production number. Those are what we want more of. So more dentistry per patient is really where you can grow right now especially if you have a backlog of patients to get in. So we need to be able to express to our patients that it's safe to come in. And once you're here, how to do more dentistry. So we're gonna talk about getting butts in the seats first, then we're gonna talk about uh, more dentistry per patient. And I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that with some case presentation as well. So the first thing is creating a safety, uh, the perception of safety in the, in the office. Uh, your team is portraying that first. Your patient is a mirror of your, your, your patient's a mirror of how your dental team member is feeling. So if, if your dental team member is stressed or fearful, then your patient's gonna be stressed or fearful. But if you're, you ever notice, if you're happy and you're energetic and you're excited to see your patients, they're more relaxed to come in. Doesn't mean they're excited and jumping up and down to be the dentist, but they're, they're on the positive spectrum. And that's what we want. So the first thing you gotta do is make sure that your team is completely on, on board with you with whatever it takes to be safe. That's number one. Then it's expressing that both non-verbally, their body language and verbally. And so number one is, you know, we got to talk to patients. They're going to call us up and say, Hey, is it safe to come in? What are you doing different? Are you guys open? What's going on down there? Right. <laughs> and so number one, we have to say, you know, Ricky Bobby, we're only allowing healthy people in the building. And by people, I mean every team member that works here and every patient that comes through. They're, we're only allowing healthy people in the building. And so we do a very thorough screening for every team member in the morning and for every patient that walks in the door. That way we're, we're making sure that everyone's healthy, okay? That's number one. Number two is, like always, in addition to that, we've always gone above and beyond all the recommended, whatever CDC is recommended, we've always been above and beyond those safety measures. And it's, that is built to keep us safe through the personal protective equipment that we wear. So you have to know this, that if we are safe, then you're safe. It's just you and us in the building, it's just you and us in that room. And so by our, us being safe, you're now safe, Mrs. Jones. Does that, does that make sense to you? You ask that question to get them on board with it. And then ask them to schedule. How do you feel about going ahead and getting an appointment scheduled? That ask often, often gets missed. So make sure your team is not just ending it with some information and then there's just dead silence. Always follow with a question. 
How do you feel about getting that scheduled? Would it make sense to go ahead and get you appointed? All right, so that's number one, getting butts in the seats, let them know it's safe to come in, all right? Lots more we can talk about there when it comes to getting new patients in the door and how to do that and, and, and on the phone, having good phone skills, but that's for another conversation. Number two, what we wanna talk about is more dentistry per patient. And so right now we're talking about a supercharged ideal day scheduling system. In the past, you've had schedule to goal, ideal day scheduling system. Let's say a dentist's goal is $5,000, just the dentist, right? $5,000 a day, has a goal, knows how to schedule it. They probably have five hours of high productive time where they have schedule about 4,000 and they probably have three hours to get the other thousand dollars. That's pretty typical. Well, right now, we have to recognize that we just lost two months of that, right? We just lost $60,000 a month for two months. That's $120,000. So how do we make up for that? We've got to have best month ever repeat, on repeat for the rest of the year, the rest of 2020. So that means we have $120,000 to catch up on, right? That's six months left in the year, figuring there's Christmas and Thanksgiving in there. So six months left, $120,000, right? That's $20,000 more a month. How are we gonna do that? Well, if you work 20 days a month, that'd be $1,000 extra day, you know, per day. If you work 15 days, do that math, okay? So I've been basically seeing somewhere between $1,000 and $1,300 a day increase. So the dentist then says, well, to me, they say, well, I've had a hard time hitting my goal consistently anyway. How are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna shoot for it. We're gonna expect it mentally. We're gonna have a, a blueprinted day and we're gonna have six hours of high production time, not five. And we're gonna decrease our low productive time from three hours to two hours. That means people who are normally scheduled for low production stuff are gonna be scheduled further out and people with higher production cases, more dentistry per sit down are gonna be in the morning. Well, that's great to plan for it. How do I get that, Eric? I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna to get to case acceptance. So we'll talk about how to verbalize that and get them on board. So supercharged ideal day scheduling, figure out what your number is and then get your team on board to plan for that. If you don't, you're just gonna have a bunch of mixed days and maybe you have good days and bad days, but if we plan for the best day, we have a greater shot at hitting that, okay? Greater chance, right? All right, now, before we go into case acceptance, I want to talk about hygiene. This is a great place where, uh, as a dental community, we can recognize that the hygiene department can be so instrumental in the growth of a practice, whether it's, you know, eight days a week or 12 days a week of hygiene, even 15 days a week of hygiene. You have to figure out what your number is, how you can, what you can manage, and there's ways of doing that. And we need to make sure that we understand that if the patients are in hygiene, that's where we're diagnosing and we're getting that treatment scheduled on the doctor side and helping patients get healthier and prevent bigger problems. But we also have to recognize that we've got a big problem in dentistry uh, with hygiene because if April was open, six months later, October's gonna be wide open. And we don't wanna end up with everybody being furloughed in October, right? So uh, it's really important that your team be on top of turning these patients around on their continuing care to a five, four or five month continuing care, not a six month. How do we do that? Well, a more frequent uh, continuing care. Well, my insurance covers two a year. Is it six months in a day or not? So for those that are six months in a day, insurance plans set that aside. But for your cash pay patients, you know, your insurance plans that cover twice in a calendar year, uh, for your membership, in-office membership plan patients, that's not a problem. We just talk with them. If they have anything that's you know, diagnosed as unhealthy in the hygiene chair at that moment because they waited seven or eight months, then awesome, turn them around and say, you know what, to get things caught up and to get ahead of the game and ahead of the problem, my recommendation is that we see you in four months, in five months instead of six this time, and then we'll go six next time to make sure that we get ahead of any infection or disease or decay, whatever it is, build up, you point out a condition, okay? Now, the second way you can do this is you can say, Ricky Bobby, as you know, we've been through a lot lately and we have a lot of patients trying to get in. They're trying to get in, they've missed their appointments and all of our timing is off. Everyone is normally seen the same months every year, every six months, they come in in April, they come in October. Well, now those April patients didn't come in and so we need your help. 
We were wondering if you could come in in October instead of November, your insurance covers it. Be great for your, your health of your gums to come in one month earlier. And then you're on a new cycle and that allows us to get people in this year so they get their two cleanings in this year. Would you be willing to help them out and us out as well? All right, thank you so much. Pretty easy. So you can use both of those. You can use one of those or the other depending on the situation. So I hope that makes sense. So supercharging your ideal day scheduling and hygiene means a quicker turnaround, okay? And hopefully you've already recognized that if you're spending your triple P money correctly, you're expanding your hours right now in the month of June, the month of July, whatever that your eight week period is gonna be or longer, you're making sure that if, if you can work an extra day, your office can be open an extra day. You can add another column of hygiene to get these patients back in. That is the lifeblood of case acceptance in the doctor's chair, okay? Now, more dentistry per visit on the doctor's side. What I wanna help dentists with is understand that we hate the, the phrase or the word sell, selling dentistry, that phrase, selling dentistry. And so we've disguised it with <laughs> really not disguised very well with case presentation, <laughs> case acceptance, you know, that's selling. So we, not, we may not be in the business of selling, but our business does require us to sell. And the sooner we get over that and understand, I wanna do that my way and not in a pressure way, the better we're gonna be at that. And a lot of dentists have that fear of rejection and that barrier to allowing that to really happen. And so I wanna make sure that first of all, I'm here to help you, but if, if you need help, first of all, you gotta recognize, it doesn't matter what the patient says in response to what I'm gonna do, it's their choice. And by not be thinking, by saying, I'm not gonna pressure them into anything, it's always their choice, it takes the pressure off of you and eliminates that fear of rejection. Not everybody's gonna say yes and that's okay. The second thing you're gonna do is you're not gonna be a pushy salesman. You're not gonna tell people what they need to do so you're never gonna look in someone's mouth and say, oh, you need a crown on number three, let's get you scheduled. Go up front and see Cynthia, she'll get you scheduled. That's selling, that's pressure sales. That's the wrong thing, we, that's what we don't wanna do. And the patients say to you when you walk in the room in the hygiene chair for the doctor exam, they say, don't find anything today, doc. And we wonder why they're saying that to us. They're saying that to us because we've said in the past, you need, you need, you need. And so the co-diagnosis prop, co-diagnosis process becomes so important, we can't forget it. That's how we do more dentistry per visit. That's how we improve our case acceptance, all right? So what we wanna do is make sure that as you see these patients in hygiene, a new patient, complete, completing phase one, moving into phase two, whatever that is, we're talking to them about how concerned we are with what we see, okay? so. I'll use a couple word pictures. I'll give you some, some verbal skills, but uh, the case presentation formula, formula is really where you can make a difference in your practice. So uh, I'll just hit some high points and hopefully this is really helpful to you to really just bring your practice back and get it up to speed. I'm gonna begin with the end in mind. I'm gonna start at the end and I'm gonna go back to the beginning here. And I wanna share a, a, a word picture with you. Uh, this is one that, that I've used throughout the years and patients really seem to understand it and it really connects well with financial arrangements. And where this comes from is patients will get a treatment, a treatment plan, right? We have a treatment plan presenter. We don't sell, but we have a treatment plan presenter. <laughs> so they get a treatment plan, they look at the fees and they go, I can't afford this. And then, you know, Rebecca, the receptionist says, well, we have this program where you can do 12 months, no interest. Okay, well, I'll do this one at the top. I'll, I'll take care of this one. I can afford, you know, $100 a month. Let's do that. Or $200 a month. Let's do those two things. Well, the problem with that is that means they're not doing an additional treatment until at least 13 months. And then they're going to do another 12 months, no interest. And then, th then it extends and extends and extends. Well, the problem with that is you get two and a half, three years, four years into a treatment plan, you're running into you know, teeth breaking off of the gum line and you're going to have a, you know, $3,000 implant or a bridge or whatever that might be. And so what we want to do is help the patient understand that this is a cost prevention system by getting all the dentistry done now, getting it done in as soon as possible format. And so the word picture that I use is a two-story, four-bedroom house. It's got four windows and you're looking at it 
right, Ricky Bobby? And you see a candle in each one of those windows. And that candle's burning. You've come to me now and that candle is, is really, it's, it's become a fire hazard in all four rooms. And most patients ask me, you know, two upper, two lower rooms. They say, well, which area should I take care of first? And I agree, you came in, this is a priority. We should take care of this right away, this one that you pointed out to me. So if we take care of that upper right room for you first, they're looking at you upper right, uh, that's great. The issue is we got three other rooms that have candles burning in them. And you notice this one first because your body was sending a signal. It's trying to tell you something. It's saying, hey, we're, we're a fire hazard. And if you, if you take a long time, if you take months to get to other rooms, by the time you get to the last room or maybe the third room, you're going to have to completely pay to remodel those rooms. We don't want you to have to go through that. And so our goal is to blow out the candles in all, all four rooms in a short amount of time as possible. That means seeing me and getting this, these concerns treated within a three to four month period, okay? Probably over four to six visits, okay? That's much better than elongating it and taking a longer time because then you have higher risk for more problems and more expenses down the line for a complete remodel. Does that make sense? Okay, now that's the end. How did I get there? By the way, when they go out and they go do financial arrangements now, and we're talking about $20,000 to $60,000 of dentistry, they're going, well, I can't afford that. And, they, and if they revert back to you know, 12 month no interest plans or, or one thing at a time, uh, we have a problem. And so the goal of this to make sure that your team knows that you're using this type of, of setup is that they can use an extended payment company and show them, look, you can still pay the same amount, $200 a month. You're just going to pay for it for four years or five years like you would have if you did it 12 months, no interest every year. But we get the dentistry done now so you don't have to worry about those other rooms later on being completely remodeled. And the patient says, well, there's interest though. And I say, yeah, there's 14% interest. And that interest is way less expensive than having to remodel those, those rooms. It's, it's an it's absolute financial saver to do that now. So I can spend a lot of time talking about how to do financial arrangements and make it easy. What I really wanna help you with today is case presentation formula. Uh, I wrote this uh, formula with some dentists back in 2007 in a program I taught, and uh, it just really made sense to us to have the patient co-diagnose and bring us along. And uh, you probably have heard of the 80-20 principle, right? 80% of your success comes from your top 20% people. 80% uh, of your problems comes from your bottom 20% people, et cetera. Well, what I decided was we needed a 95-5 rule. And the 95-5 rule says that 95% of your time when you're talking with the patient about what's going on in their mouth, that it is condition and consequence focused. It is not treatment focused. 5% is treatment focused. So 95 slash five. Now that, that 95 slash five means I'm gonna earn the right to talk about the 5%. And so I will be condition focused throughout the whole appointment. Condition focused throughout the whole appointment. I'll make sure that every step of the way the patient understands what I'm concerned about and what it's gonna to lead to if they don't do anything. And so in dentistry, we have two consequences that we deal with, toothache and tooth loss, right? And so those are the consequences that we talk about. So keeping that in mind as we go through this, formula, you're going to see that I'm working my way towards getting the ability to even talk about treatment. I never bring up treatment before the patient understands what the problem is and says that they want to fix the problem. That's the goal. So step one uh, in your case presentation formula should always be to understand that people buy for their reasons, not your reasons. Just because you have initials after your name does not necessarily mean they're going to listen to you. In fact, there's probably a greater chance they're going to rebel and, re and, and say, who are you to tell me what to do? You tell me I need to do something, it reminds them that you say, oh, you need to take out the trash, you need to clean your room, you need to do your homework, and they rebel against that. So what we want to do is never be in a position to say you need something. So if I can understand what this patient's why is, what, what a healthy mouth does for them, I, I, I got that earlier in the conversation, okay? I found out what's important to them, why they want to take care of their mouth, I replay that reason back to them. And I say, Ricky Bobby, earlier you shared with me, it was really important to you to have peace of mind knowing that you weren't gonna lose your teeth like your grandfather did. Taking that into consideration throughout the exam, I made sure that I evaluated everything to help you achieve that. There are concerns that you heard during the exam 
that are standing in the way of you achieving that. And I want to go over this with you now. Okay. So that's step one. Step two is condition focused. Anytime I talk about the condition, I talk about the concern. So I say, uh, step part two, I say, so, uh, and that's why I'm concerned about a few areas. One is the health of your gum tissue. Two is old fillings that are breaking down, uh, abscesses, fractures, decay, spacing, whatever it is, the concern that I'm seeing. I'm so concerned about those things. Okay, I, I just, all I'm talking about are what I actually see, intro cameras, x-rays, visual, uh, word pictures describing it to them. Step three is the consequence. They have to understand that it's not getting better on its own. People, people often will <laughs> become web MD specialists. They're, all of a sudden they're dentists and doctors now. And if it's not hurting, the perception is it's not a problem. So no pain, right? No problem, no pay. And they don't understand that. That's why Rebecca, the receptionist, gets and, and, and gets the, the phone call. Hey, you know, we have you scheduled with Dr. Smith coming up for your appointment. Oh, I was just getting ready to call you. You know, that tooth, that one that I was scheduled for, it's not even bothering me. So I'm going to go ahead and wait. <sighs> And that happens so much. And they don't understand that we're trying to prevent that from happening, we're trying to help them you know, prevent that. And so because the patient is so built upon, I don't feel anything, they can't see it, there's no, co there's no diagnosis happening on their part, you have to take them back to that. And so in the case presentation formula, their why, the conditions, it leads to a consequence. And so I'm concerned about it, here to describe what the problem is, the reason I'm so concerned about it, Ricky Bobby, is because of what it leads to. You know, the gum tissue, the infections in the gums, that's the number one reason people lose their teeth. That's probably why your grandfather lost his teeth. The, number, the second way people lose their teeth is through decay, cavities, that turn into infections and cause us to have to remove teeth or they break off. And so I'm really concerned about helping you prevent those things and having them get worse. Okay, so I'm setting them up to understand from my perspective, what I'm seeing so that they can make a really good decision. Okay, so reason number one, people buy, people buy for their reasons, not your reasons. Number two, okay, people don't buy a solution to a problem they don't perceive to have. I'll say that again. People don't buy a solution to a problem they don't perceive to have. It's not bothering me. I'm going to go ahead and wait. I didn't realize it was that much. I'll just wait. I mean, I'll do it if it's two or $300, but... For that much, it's not bothering me that bad. People have different values of what they perceive to be important to buy. People buy for their reasons, not your, re not your reasons, and people don't buy a solution to a problem they don't perceive to have. You know, my wife will say, we need a new um, area rug uh, in the office. Uh, this one looks pretty good to me. <laughs> so, and then, and then I'll say, well, how much is it, right? And then we get into this, you know, back and forth on it. We do this when we buy. And you have to understand that there's two types of purchases people are making push or pull. Push is when life pushes it and thrusts it into you. And pull is when I, 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 I choose it. So I want to go on vacation. I want to go out to eat. I want to go on a date. I want to go out to the movies. Usually entertainment, enjoy. I enjoy spending my money. I want to buy a new, whatever that is, TV, car, whatever that might be. Over here, push or pull, need. I need new tires. I need to get gas. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to pay my bills. Those are the worlds that we live in. If you put dentistry in the need category and you portray it all that time, you're, you're talking to the subconscious and you're putting their money in that category. They hate spending their money in that category. So get them to choose for their reasons, understand what the problem is, and then say, what do you want to do? So step number four is called test the buy-in. And so I'll say to a patient, I'm in the 95% still, and I'll say to the patient, well, how concerned are you with preventing this from getting worse? How concerned are you with taking care of this? And I use that word concern. And they'll, yeah, eh, you got to read, is it a yes or is it a, eh, I don't really know. And they'll say, yeah, I'm concerned. That to me says they're not concerned. And so I'll dig a little deeper, ask a question. This is where you may pass it off to a treatment coordinator, another person, okay? Doesn't have to all be done by the doctor, by the way, once it's treatment planned. So how concerned are you with this, Ricky Bobby? Making sure it doesn't get any worse. If he says, yeah, I'm really concerned about it. I will confirm. I'll say, so would it make sense then for us to come up with a plan together on how we can help you pre prevent this from getting worse? 
Yes. So I've got two yeses in my 95%. I move that line between the 95 and the five, and now I'm free to talk about treatment. I don't use the word need. I say, well, what we will do is we'll treat the gums, we'll treat the decay, we'll treat the spaces with X, Y, and Z. At the end of me talking about the 5% treatment, last step, I will ask for commitment. And I think you've heard different people say things like, you know, either or close. Would you like to do that today or tomorrow? <laughs> this week or next week? How soon would you like to do that? Do you see any good reason why you wouldn't want to go ahead and get this scheduled? And to me, that's the biggest issue we have in clinical dentistry with selling is we then start to come across as a car salesman. And I don't want that to happen. So I think a, a good question is, would it make sense for us to get this scheduled and get these things taken care of be, before they become a bigger problem? Okay, that's, that's one. My favorite is really opening myself up for potential objections because I want to take care of them before I waste any time scheduling something that's just going to cancel. And so what I say is, how do you feel about moving forward with this plan to take care of these concerns? How do you feel? Now you've got an open-ended question that's going to create conversation. If there's an issue, they're going to tell you. Or you're going to be able to read that they're not telling you something. Okay? So now once they say yes, then I say, I'm recommending then that you look at this like a house. Four windows. There's a candle burning. And we're going to take care of all of them so that we don't waste time, too much time getting to the other bedrooms and having them become a, a real problem where they, they burn and then you have to remodel areas. We don't want to get to that place. And so uh, I recommend that you get all this addressed within the next X number of months, okay? That way you feel like you have some peace of mind knowing that you're preventing bigger problems beyond what we've identified today. How does that sound to you? Does that sound fair? Okay, let's take you up front. We'll talk to Rebecca about figuring out how to schedule this and fitting this into your financial uh, budget. How's that sound? Okay, great. And then you go up front and then we, we go into a transfer. We do transfer of care. We make sure we give the next person all that information. So I want to make sure that everyone is understanding the big picture here of what uh, this is about. This is about us getting caught up with patients getting healthier quicker. So they're not delaying treatment, becoming bigger problems. And number two, it's about getting our businesses healthier. And so I want to make sure that everybody knows that this isn't going to just come out of your mouth perfectly. I've been working on this for nearly 20 years. Yeah. 20, uh, 22 years. So this isn't something that just rolls off the tongue. It's something that you have to practice. You have to work on. So we want to make sure that you're being, we're giving you the tools to understand the formula and we're here to help you and make sure that you get uh, really good case acceptance moving forward to get your practice healthy and get your patients healthy. Okay. All right, awesome.